Hey, what's up you guys? It's Ruthie and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Comment down below what you want to see in the future. Click that subscribe button and <clears throat> turn on my post notifications so that you guys get notified every single time I upload a video. Um, like I said in the last video, give me some book recommendations in the comments and I will do what I can to get those books, but you already know I have a lot of books and we're going to try and go through all of those as well. But let's get right into the last chapter of Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. So, yeah. Alright, here we go. This video may contain sensitive topics and foul language. If you do not wish to continue, please click off of the video now. You have been warned. Saturday, six days later. Chapter 43. The sun climbed up her legs in her lifelike patches, reaching through the tall willow tree in the Reynolds yard. The day was warm, but the stone step she sat on was cool through the back of her new jeans. Pip winked against the shifting beams of light, watching them all. I get together, Joanna Reynolds' message had said, but Jamie joked it was a surprise, I'm not dead, barbecue. Pip had found that funny. She hadn't found much funny the past few weeks, but that had done it. The dads were hovering around the barbecue, and Pip could see her dad eyeing the unflipped burgers, itching to take over from Arthur Reynolds. Mohan Singh was laughing, tilting his head back to drink his beer. The sunlight making the bottle glow. Joanna was leaning over the picnic table nearby, removing plastic wrap from the tops of the bowls, pasta salad and potato salad, an actual salad. Dropping serving spoons into each one, the other side of the yard, Car stood talking with Robbie, Connor, and Zach. Robbie was in, in, intermediately kicking a tennis ball for Josh to chase. Pip watched her brother whooping as he cartwheeled after the ball. A smile on his face that was pure and unknowing, ten years old, the same age Child Brunswick was when Stanley's dying face flashed into her mind. Pip screwed her eyes shut, but that never took him away. She breathed three deep breaths like her mom told her to do and reopened her eyes. She sifted her gaze and took a shaky, shaky sip of her water her hand sweating against the glass. Misha Singh and Pip's mom were standing with Naomi Ward, Matt Silva, and Zoe Reynolds. Words unheard passing from one another, smiles flowing along behind them. It was nice to see Matt smiling. Pip thought it changed her somehow. And Jamie Reynolds, he was walking toward her, wrinkling his freckled nose. He sat down on the step beside her, his knee grazing hers as he settled. How are you doing? He asked, running one finger over the rim of his beer bottle. Pip didn't answer the question. How are you? She insisted. I'm good. Jamie looked at her. A smile stretching into his pink, tightened cheeks. Good, but I can't stop thinking about him. The smile flickered out. I know, said Pip. He wasn't what people expected, Jamie said quietly. You know, he tried to, to fit a whole mattress through that gap in the bathroom door so I would be comfortable. He asked me every day what I'd like for dinner, despite being scared of me of what I almost did. You wouldn't have killed him, Pip said. I know. No, Jamie sniffed, looking down at the smashed Fitbit still on his wrist. he had said that he would never take it off. He wanted it there as a reminder. I knew I couldn't do it. Even when when the knife was in my hand, I, I was so scared, but that doesn't make it any better. I told the police everything, but without Stanley, they don't have enough to charge me. Doesn't feel right somehow. Doesn't feel right that we're both here and he's not, Pip said her chest tightening, filling her head with the sound of cracking ribs. They both led Charlie to him, in a way, and we're alive and he's not. I'm alive because of you, Jamie said, not looking at her. You and Robbie and Connor, if Charlie had worked out, it was Stanley before that night, We might have killed. he might have killed me too. I mean, he sat a building on fire with you inside. Yeah, Pip said, the words she used were no other would fit, but she didn't agree. She didn't think Charlie had been trying to kill her. That wasn't it. He wanted her to get out and leave Stanley there to die. They're going to find him eventually, Jamie said. Charlie Green and Flora. They can't run forever. The police will catch them. And that's what Hawkins had said to Pip the night. We we will get him, but one day had turned into two. Two had turned into three weeks. Yeah, she said again. Has my mom stopped hugging you yet? Jamie asked, trying to bring her out of her thoughts. Not yet, she said. She hasn't stopped hugging me either, he laughed. Pip's eyes followed Joanna as she handed a plate to Arthur at the grill. Your dad loves you, you know, Pip said. I know he doesn't always say it or show it in the right way, but I saw him the moment he thought he had lost you forever, and he loves you, Jamie, a lot. Jamie's eyes filled, started sparkling in the dappled sunlight. I know, he said. 
over the lump in his throat. He coughed it down. I've been thinking, Pip said, turning to face him. All Stanley wanted was a quiet life to learn to be better and to try to do some good with it. And he doesn't get to do that anymore. But we're still here. We're alive. She paused, beating Jamie's eyes. Can you promise me something? Can you promise me you'll live a good life, a full life, a happy one, live well, and do it for him because he can't anymore? Jamie held her eyes in a quiver of his lower lip. I promise, he said, and you too. I'll try, she nodded, wiping her eyes with her sleeve and just as Jamie did the same, they laughed. Jamie took a quick sip of his beer. Starting today, he said, I think I'm going to apply to the ambulance service to work as a trainee paramedic. Pip smiled at him. That's a good start. They watched the others for a moment, Arthur dropping the load of hot dog buns and Josh wanting to pick them up, shouting, five second rule. That's laugh high and unguarded. And Jamie continued, with the final episodes out, I guess you've already kind of told the whole world. I'm now, I'm in love with Matt Da Silva. So I guess I should tell her myself sometime. And if she doesn't feel the same, I move on. Onward and upward and more strangers on the, in and no more strangers on the internet. He raised his beer bottle out toward her. Live well, he said. Pip lifted her glass of water and clinked it against Jamie's bottle. For him, she said. Jamie hugged her, a quick teetering hug, different from Connor's clumsy hugs. Then he stood up and walked across the yard to Nat's side. His eyes were different when he looked at her, fuller somehow, brighter. A dimpled smile stretched across his face and she turned to him. The laugh still in her voice and Pip swore maybe just for a second she could see the same look in Nat's eyes. She watched the two of them joking around with Jamie's sister. And she didn't even notice Robbie walking over, not until he sat down, hooking one of his feet under her leg. You okay, Sarge, he said. Yeah. You want to come over and join everyone? I'm fine here, she said, but everyone is. I said I'm fine, Pip said, but it wasn't her saying it, not really. She sighed and looked across at him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to snap it. I know, Robbie said, closing her hand over hers, sliding his fingers in between hers. In the perfect way they slotted together, they still fit. It'll get better, I promise, he pulled her and even closer and I'm here whenever you need me she didn't deserve him not even one little bit I love you she said looking into his dark brown eyes filling herself with them pushing everything else out I love you too Pip shuffled leaning over leaning over the rest of her rest, to rest her head on Robbie's shoulder as they watched the others everyone had now encircled Josh and he tried his best to teach them all how to floss, straight jerking arms and locking hips everywhere. Oh God, Jamie, you're so embarrassing, Connor giggled as his brother somehow managed to hit himself in the groin, bending double. Matt and Cora clutched each other, falling to the grass with laughter. Look at me, I can't do it. Pip's dad, I can do it, Pip's dad was saying because of course he was. Even Arthur Reynolds was trying, still at the grill thinking nobody could see him. Pip laughed watching him, how ridiculous they all looked. The sound, a small croak in her throat, and it was okay to be out here on the sidelines with Robbie, separate, a gap between everyone and here. A barricade around her, she would even join them when she was ready, but for now, all she wanted to do was sit far back enough that she could see them all in one go. It was evening. Her family had eaten too much at the Reynolds house and were dozing downstairs. Pip's room was dark, her face underlit by the glow ghostly white light of her laptop. She sat at her desk, staring at the screen, studying for finals. That's what she told her parents because she, she lies. She lies now. She finished typing out the search bar and pressed enter. More, most recent sightings of Charlie and Flora Green. They'd been spotted nine days ago, security footage of them drawing money from an ATM just outside of Madison. The police had verified that one. She'd seen it on the news, but here, Pip Click someone, someone had commented on an article posted on Facebook claiming they'd seen the couple yesterday at a gas station near Wichita, driving a new car, a red Nissan Juke. Pip ripped the top sheet of her pad and paper, screwed it up, and threw it behind her. She hunched over, checking back to the screen as she scribbled the details down on a fresh page, returned to her search. We're the same, you and me, you know it deep down. Charlie's voice intruded, speaking inside her head. The scariest thing was Pip didn't know if he was wrong. She couldn't say how they were different. She just knew that they were. It was a feeling beyond words, or maybe just maybe. The feeling was only hope. She stayed there, clicking through for hours, jumping from article to article, comment to comment. And it was with her too, of course. It always was. The gut. It was here now, beating within her chest, knocking against her ribs, aiming with her eyes. It was in nightmares and crashing pans and heavy breaths and dropped pencils and thunderstorms and closing doors. 
and too loud and too quiet and alone and not and the ruffle of pages and the tapping of keys and every click and every creak the gun was always there it lived inside her now that is the end of good girl Ga bad blood by holly jackson i hope that you guys enjoyed this book as much as i did oh my goodness I can't wait to get these videos out to you and get started on book three, but I will see you guys when we go into book three or the other videos I have planned in between then and now. Bye!